Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the Intro to Modern OpenGL tutorial series. Now the video you're watching right now is just an FAQ video. It's here to answer some questions that I'm going to get asked at some point, and to give you a chance to uh, express any questions, comments, or concerns you may have about the series right up front. So, that's what this video is all about, and if that sounds interesting to you, then come on, join me, and we're going to have a fantastic time doing some FAQ stuff. Otherwise, feel free to skip on to the next video, where we should, hopefully, be actually starting, you know, getting some things set up, doing some stuff, and, you know, all that stuff. So, without thur- Actually, yes, with further ado, because I want to show you the final result what we end up with at the end of the series, just to give you an idea of what the scope of the series is, how far we're taking this. And it looks something like this. As you see, it's a rotating monkey head. And hopefully this gives you, well, like I said, an idea of just what the scope of the series is. This is not the 3D Game Engine series. This is a series designed to give you an intro to OpenGL, how you can do graphics with it, what OpenGL actually is doing under the hood, and, you know, all that stuff. So we're not going to go in-depth on how you can use OpenGL for game programming or any of that. It's just focused on what OpenGL is, how it works, and how you can use it rather effectively. That type of thing. And if that confused you, don't worry. I haven't even started the FAQ yet, but yeah. So with that, let's go on and let's start the FAQ. Question 1. What the heck is OpenGL? And that might sound a little silly at first, but it's a perfectly valid question. People talk about OpenGL a fair bit, and not a lot of people actually talk about what it is. They just speak with some implicit understanding, like everyone understands what it is. And well, it goes a little something like this. OpenGL is a way of giving hardware-independent access to your graphics hardware. And let me elaborate on what I mean like that. Let's say, for instance, you're a game developer, and you've got your big fancy gaming rig set up, you've got your powerful NVIDIA graphics card, and all, all this fancy stuff set up, and you're building a game. So, of course, you're going to want to use the features of your NVIDIA graphics card to make your game run ridiculously fast on your powerful hardware. And OpenGL provides a very good way of doing that. Use the OpenGL methods, and they'll provide highly optimized code for your NVIDIA graphics card. But then, you complete your game, and you want to give it to your buddy. But your buddy's not an NVIDIA guy, he's an ATI guy, he likes ATI stuff, and, well, code that runs really well for an NVIDIA graphics card won't run really well on his hardware. But that's okay, because OpenGL still provides highly optimized code for ATI graphics hardware and every other combination of graphics hardware you can imagine. That's the best I really think I can describe what OpenGL does. It provides a way of accessing highly optimized code for your graphics hardware, and, well, for any graphics hardware. And that's really the point of OpenGL. You can use really powerful features of your graphics hardware at its optimum without worrying about, oh wait, this is really good for one type of graphics card, but not for the rest of the type of graphics card. No, no. OpenGL handles all that for you. And that's what OpenGL is. Question 2. What'll I need to follow along? And, well, there's a few things. For one, you'll need a graphics card that's been made in the last 10 years. If you have something older than that for some reason, then I honestly can't guarantee that this will work for you. Other than that, you'll need a few pieces of software to actually, you know, develop your application. And I'll go over that in the setup video, so you don't need to worry about that. I'll take you through them. But probably most importantly, you'll need at least some familiarity with programming. I'm not going to be teaching you how to program. This is the Intro to Modern OpenGL tutorial, not the Intro to Programming tutorial. So, and I'm not going to ask you're familiar with C++, which is the language I'll be using in this particular tutorial series, so don't worry about that. But I will be asking you're at least familiar with how it works. If I ask you to create your own merge sort routine, and you have a total freakout, that's a good sign that you probably want to learn a little bit more before you follow along with this series. So really, that's the big thing I'm asking out of you. You have to be at least familiar with programming. You have to know your way around the code. And yeah, and those are really the big things you're going to need to follow along. You don't need too, too much. 
So, yeah. Question 3. Help! Something isn't working! Don't worry. Calm down. I mentioned earlier in this video that OpenGL accesses highly optimized code for your graphics hardware. And that's true. The thing is, it doesn't get that code out of magic. It, it actually comes from somewhere. And that somewhere is your graphics card manufacturer. They write it, and they send it to you in your graphics driver. So if you've really run into some bizarre, inexplicable bug, and you have no idea what's going on, your first line of defense should be to update your graphics driver, because it's more than possible that something is going wrong there. And that's my big tip for any sort of issue. If you update your graphics card, or your graphics driver, and it's still not working, then you've probably made some mistake in your code that you, it, well, you just haven't found yet. So, that's my big tip if you really haven't, or if you've run into some bizarre issue and you really can't find the solution. And finally, question four. What am I gonna get from this series? After all said and done, what am I gonna know? What am I gonna be able to do? And, believe it or not, there's quite a few things you're going to get from this series. On the most basic level, you're going to be able to create a window, and you're going to be able to draw on it using OpenGL and the power of your graphics card. And that's the most basic thing you're going to get out of this. Beyond that, though, you're going to be able to draw just about any 3D mesh you can imagine in here, and you'll be able to draw as many of them as you want. I'm only drawing one, but, you know. So you can do that. You're going to be able to use textures and put them on all your different 3D meshes. You're going to be able to write shaders, which is a really powerful thing. They're... I can't talk too much about what that is without actually getting into this topic and getting into the series. But believe me, once you see them and once you do stuff with them, you'll see how powerful they are. They can do a whole bunch of stuff with textures. They can do a whole bunch of stuff with lighting. They can do a whole bunch of stuff with... with post-processing effects, motion blur, just about any graphics effect you can imagine you can do with shaders. They're extremely powerful. And there's more than I can go into in depth in the series, but you'll definitely be introduced to them, and you'll definitely be able to do some pretty cool things with them by the time the series is over. And really, those are the big things you're going to get out of the series. Well, eh, I guess I can bring it up, why not? You'll also be able to draw things at any place you want in the world, and you'll be able to create 3D perspective. I, that sort of is implicit, in my opinion, but figure I may as well bring it up anyways. So yeah, you can do all that. And those are the big things you're going to get out of the series. So, with that, that concludes the FAQ. Hope that answers your questions. If not, feel free to post them in the comments, and I will personally come in and do my best to answer your questions. Other than that, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.